Okay, in this video, what I'd like to show you is how the exclusive or function works and some of the places it can be used. Because once you understand how the exclusive or function works, it is a really versatile and pretty awesome instruction that you can use to help you in some unique situations. <music> So first, let's go ahead and I'll show you where it's at and then how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the move logic over here and I'm going to grab the exclusive or function right here and add it into this rung. Now, I'm going to do this in RS Logix 500, but it's going to be very similar in any PLC programming uh, language or program that you're using. So basically what we have in the exclusive or is you have two sources and then you have uh, a destination. And so this is where you need to decide how it's going to operate. So for example, I'm going to use I colon one dot zero. So I'm going to use the entire input card for um, of, of the PLC that will control an entire rung of inputs. Okay. Now in this case, I'm going to be using the whole word here to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish uh, what we're going to compare it to. So in this case, I'm going to use an N7 colon zero. Now some people will use the B3s. I think B3s are more uh, useful for just um, bits, individual bits, and N7, since it's the integer file, should be word used when you're trying to use a word or more than just a bit. So I'm going to use the N7 zero here. And just for fun, I'm going to make my destination, I'm going to make this card two, and I'm going to make it the whole word here. Okay. Now the exclusive or function works is that it is exclusively or, meaning it's either in the way it's typically thought of in digital is a or B. Okay. That's the way it's laid out. So it's not it, neither. It would, you would not get a true statement or if both of them are true. It would not be a true statement and you would still receive a zero. And I'm going to demonstrate this to you real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the integer file and I'm just going to type in, let's just say, I'll, I'll just type in a, a random pattern of ones and zeros. Okay. So I'll do this in decimal and then uh, hit enter. And I'll convert this to binary. So now I have ones in bit one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, and eleven. All right. Now I'm going to compare that to the input data table file of zero here. I will place this right here. All right. And then it will go to the output data table zero. Uh, output data table one here. Okay. So I can highlight this as well. So now I will compare these individual bits based on their position within the word. So here I have a zero here, a one here, I would get a one here. If I have zeros here, I would get a zero there. So now I have, an, and I'll show you this here in a second, I have a number of inputs that are wired up in an IO simulator and that we'll use to compare and see how this works. So let's go ahead and take a look. So now I'm online and you can see that here's my output. I have a one here and you can see how that relates over to that L1 light right there. Okay. And the reason I have a one is because I have an exclusive or statement zero and we'll say a one and B we get a one output. Now, anywhere where we have two zeros, like in bit four, we have a zero and we'll call it, that's actually light five here. Okay. Now, when you see that I have just uh, two ones, like in bit five, so that would be light six in this case, it's off. And the reason these two are off, even though the statements are different, that's how they actually interact with each other because it's exclusively or one or the other needs to be. So where would you use this at? Okay. There's a couple different places you could use this at depending on how things are wired up. But let's say you had an item that needed to be shaped in a very specific way. And every one of these black switches represented uh, a, a proximity sensor or a laser sensor, um, a laser beam sensor that um, determines if the shape, if it was shaped properly. And so um, based upon that, you would create this N7. So z bit zero, two, three, 
five, six, seven, eight, and 11 can all, that they need to be true and everything else needs to be false. So when the product comes down the conveyor belt or is placed in this, let's call it a quality control uh, machine, that's where the bits, that's where all of the inputs should line up. So if I come through here and I activate them, so I place the item in there and all of the switches are, all the switches are true or false based upon what they're supposed to be, which is established in N7-0. Then I, I look and I say, oh no, look, I have one output that is true. What's the problem? Oh, your operator could look there and see, oh, okay, listen, input seven isn't, it, it's not, it's not activating the way it should be. That means maybe the shape is misformed. And then based off that, you could use this. And anytime this value is less than zero, you could reject that pile. Okay. Or maybe your program's wrong. So you come in here and you change this to zero. All right. Let's say the shape of it has changed. Now that turns it off. So let, let me run through a scenario. So a piece comes in, it gets, it, it's, it gets checked. Okay, I don't have any inputs on here, but you could. You could easily add a start button or another prox to activate this exclusive OR. And so it turns out that everything is perfect. All right, my destination equals zero. It moves on to the next phase. The next piece comes in, which three, okay, let's say, you know, proximity sensor three indicates, hey, there's a, re there's a problem. Uh, we'll call it a reflective sensor. There's a problem here. That part gets then rejected because this input here isn't at, isn't equal to zero. Okay. And let me show you what I mean by that. So now I've added a couple things in here. So I have a part in place. So the part gets put in there. The button is activated. Let, we'll just use a button in this case, but it could be a proximity sensor uh, that allows it to be timed perfectly into place. And if these two aren't equal and the part in place is activated, it will reject the part. Okay. So let me show you how this works. So now what we can do is we can actually use this to reject a part and actually make motion happen to push the part away. So the part comes in, let's say an operator has to hit a part in place or there's some uh, proximity sensor that's on a timer. And so what happens is the button gets pushed. None of the lights come on. So that means the part is good. It can move on. But let's say one of the proximity sensors is off. Okay. Let's say the piece wasn't molded or created correctly. And so when it comes in, the operator activates it. Oh, it's no longer equal to zero. You can see that rejected part is pushed off. Okay. And this sets the limits for this to operate. Okay. And so this is an example of where you could use an exclusive or and like a quality control product or something like this. So anyway, I hope the video uh, helped out and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Thank you so much.